because you can't exactly say, well, if design firm X is adopting this and are ta undertaking this, you can't exactly opt out. So we had the pentagrams forcing the IDOs and the IDOs forcing frog design and frog design fo focusing you know, their energy on smart design and, and all of these, the most unusual bedfellows getting together. Um, and then there was a lot of business sense that came out of it. In, uh, you know, in the response to regulation, you just have to have these skills. And then finally, the community element really came. And it was, um, as Peter said, over 100 countries, and there are currently 150,000 people involved in this movement. And it started with having a very clear directive of what our goal was, which is to integrate sustainability into all practice and production in the creative community in the broadest sense. The second thing was about... Um, motivating people to participate. And I have to say, I mean, truly, it was a lot of peer pressure, but it also it just makes business sense as well. And then the thing to really, to, I believe in kind of retrospect and talking to people about this, the thing in galvanizing a movement like this is to remove the hurdles for people to actually accomplish what we set out to do in the beginning. And that's really where those, um, those meetings offline and online come in um, to, to, um, to come into play. We're in two years, the first two years, and I've said that if we can't do this in five years, then, you know, it's over. If, if, the, if, we, if, we, if the most prepared minds and problem solvers can't solve this problem that is so based in tradition and competitiveness, then, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to be a designer. Um, so the next three years is going to be part of an emergent strategy to remove these hurdles and just, just kind of amplify it. And hopefully we've got a lot of traction um, in, in North and South America and Asia and hopefully now more in Europe with this conversation as well. So I'm going to quickly go through a couple of um, just artifacts that have come from the people that are, are designing in the Designers Accord. And I'm going to show you a quick 60-second video that I think you'll enjoy. So these are solar panels. Typically, people don't put solar panels on their house because they're ugly and because you need to hire somebody who's a specialist and it takes a great deal of time. These are solar panels that one of the um, design firms made that you can actually make, you can screw in yourself and they are um, very much in style with Southern California and, and South America. A lot of reuse, um, taking scraps from factories and um, from different sort of designers and actually restitching them together to create new products. Sharing um, carbon footprints of firms that have never talked to each other, actually saying, this is how we did it, this is where our vulnerabilities are, and what do you think, can you help us? Um, there was a, a big, at one of the, the big art schools in the United States, um, a couple of students that were part of this took over the school and wallpapered it and said, look, we can't be just obsessing about typography and, and industrial design and architecture. We have to be thinking about social issues. And why don't we create a program that focuses on water issues instead of graphic design? Um, it was pretty profound. Um, there's a group out in California that met last week to talk about how they would bring in social gaming to sustainability. Another group that's talking about how to work with um, mayors all over the um, United States um, that are in charge of these cities to bring back cultural dimensions. Um, packaging from large packaging that we know we don't need to actually slim down packaging um, that removes those 35-pound manuals that we never read anyway. Um, ways to message um, how to return equipment. So if you have a regulation that says, yeah, you can use it, but the factory or the company has to take it back, what are they going to do with it? Concepts around water conservation, bicycle use, um, different kinds of hygiene and cooking issues in the developing country, sharing of methodologies around design, um, what are new concepts for how we think about what's recyclable and what's reusable. Um, architecture, get, bringing together architects from all over the world to triage in places that have natural disasters. A solar coffee maker, which is equal to all of those. Um, people share ideas about what they're learning and, and start um, kind of new movements. Paper, uh, paper plastic, instead of plastic, uh, paper bottle. Um, a just-in-time software that tells designers what the materials are that are toxic that they may not use, they may not need, need to use and don't know. How do you get groups involved in actually generating light? We're actually, I showed this in Tokyo a couple of weeks ago, and we have a group that's going to do this. They're going to take the people that, in Tokyo, everyone sort of waits at th for three minutes at the light and waits for the light to change. Um, and so someone had suggested, well, what if we got all of them to do something? <laughs> And so this was the inspiration for that. And then if I, do I have 60 more seconds to show this quick video? 
60? Okay. So this is a project from five designers at IDEO that I'll show you. 1.1 billion people in the world don't have access to clean water. Over 5,000 children die each day because of water-related diseases. Our solution is the aqueduct, a pedal-powered vehicle that transports water and filters it while in motion. Often water sources are distant, and women must devote hours of labor just to meet the basic needs of their families. Walking three miles or more is common. Traveling this distance via motorbike or truck consumes fuel and pollutes the air. Moreover, a family of four needs a minimum of 20 gallons of water per day. Sanitizing this much water by boiling consumes precious resources and contributes to deforestation. The aqueduct enables a person to get enough water for an entire family and clean it in one trip. The aqueduct is composed of two tanks, a filter, a belt drive, a peristaltic pump, and a clutch connected to an idler pulley. Once the rider arrives at the water source, she fills the large tank at the back of the vehicle with water. The cap is replaced and the rider can start home. As the rider pedals, the peristaltic pump draws the water from the large tank through a filter to a two gallon clean tank. Upon arrival, the clean water tank is easily removed and taken inside the home for drinking and cooking needs. The closed container eliminates the contamination that currently occurs from storage in open containers. When more filtered water is needed, the clean water tank is reattached. Then the rider flips a clutch that relieves the tension in the belt and disengages the pedals from the wheels. She can now filter the next two gallons while stationary. The aqueduct would allow families in developing countries to have daily access to clean water, all by harnessing the energy of pedal power. So last comment on that, it's, I, I, love, I, I never tire of seeing that video, not because it's so wonderful, but because actually the plastic was way too expensive for developing countries and the wheels would never work. Um, and so what happened was when this story was shown to the entire creative community, people started to get together to improve the idea. And, and that's kind of the main, the main takeaway with this is that they're sort of, you know, prototyping things, fail early and often, build on the ideas of others. And, and this one is the mission of IDEO as sketched out by our founder 20 years ago. We've never had a written mission, but it's, um, it's to balance your heart with... Um, with finance and never to let the two kind of go out of whack, which we've seen, obviously, that's led us to this terrible situation globally. But that's the final thing. I hope that, that some of you have the opportunity to, to join us, and we would love to save the world with you. <laughs>